What did I watch? I am kind of speechless to be honest. Oh boy. Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I am here to review Pitch Perfect 3, Pitch Perfect 3, Pitch Perfect 3. So Pitch Perfect 3 is directed by Trish C, who directed Step Up All In, a movie I never saw. And the film stars Anna Kendrick, Haley Steinfeld, Brittany Snow, Rebel Wilson, John Lithgow, and DJ Khaled? So Pitch Perfect 3 tells the story of the Bellas. They're no longer in college. They all have their own lives now. So when Emily invites the Bellas over to see her perform, the Bellas had the idea to reunite one final time to perform for the military because Anakam's father is in the military. They go there to perform and stuff happens. So let me go ahead and just start off with what I think of the Pitch Perfect series as a whole. The first Pitch Perfect, I think it's all right. Like, it's entertaining, it's decent, it's a perfectly serviceable movie. I just wouldn't say I like the movie or love the movie like I know many others do. The second Pitch Perfect, however, I actually really liked. I actually do think Pitch Perfect 2 is an improvement over the first film. I thought the characters were more enjoyable. I thought the humor, for the most part, was really enjoyable. And I just really liked how much time we got to spend with the Bellas, not to mention that the character arcs I just found to be so fascinating. And to be honest, I actually thought, despite it being a second film, it actually felt like a nice conclusion to the Bella story. Now with Pitch Perfect 3, as far as my expectations go, I was not looking forward to this movie. In fact, I was dreading it. It was one of my least anticipated movies for the rest of 2017. But of course, I did go into this movie with an open mind, hoping it's not that bad. At the very least, I would only hope it could be at least the first film where it's not particularly good or great, but serviceable. And as you guys can tell from how I reacted in my intro for this review, that is not the case. Pitch Perfect 3 is absolute crap. This is really supposed to be the farewell to these characters? I gotta say, it was a farewell. It was just a really crappy way of saying farewell to them. Pitch Perfect 3 is just an example of a third installment that did not need to happen. Like seriously, Pitch Perfect 2 honestly ended everything very nicely. It felt like a conclusion despite it, like I said, being a sequel but it was just a very nice end and there was really no need for a third film and after seeing the third film, I really still stand by that. There is no need for a third film. But before I get into why I honestly hated this movie, this movie was pretty insufferable. There are certain good things I'll say about Pitch Perfect 3. Let me just get positive, because I truly do believe in being positive before I get to a lot of the negatives when it comes to a film I just really, really can't stand. I'll say this, the Bellas do still have good chemistry. The Bellas do still interact very well. And as far as the performances go in the Bellas, Anna Kendrick, I still thought she did a good job with her performance. I can understand why some people would say she's sleepwalking. I didn't feel that way personally, but I could see why some people would say that about her when it comes to this film. But I actually thought she was still good. It still felt like she was really into this film. Same thing could be said about Britney Snow. She didn't do a bad job here. I actually thought she did do a very good job with her performance. Rebel Wilson, despite uh, how I feel about Fat Amy, and I'll get to that later, regardless of what I think of the Fat Amy character, I can't deny that Rebel Wilson still felt like she was into the role. That Rebel Wilson was really bringing in so much energy, and she actually did do a good job. But the character of Fat Amy, like I said, that's a different story. 
Anna Camp actually has a big role here, whereas she was only in Pitch Perfect 2 for a little bit. She's actually back here, and it is good to see her uh, being here with the Bellas again. She did do a good job. I enjoyed her. And last but not least, I have to say Haley Steinfeld. As Emily, she is still honestly just as great as she was in the second film, despite the fact that they don't do much with the character, unlike the second film where they did a lot of things with her. But even with that being said, Haley Steinfeld is really good here. As far as the musical moments go, like when the Bellas are singing, it's still pretty good. I did still enjoy the moments regarding the Bellas. I will say it's not as fun as the first two movies. I think the spark has kind of disappeared, but they do still sing very well. Some of their choreography isn't too bad either. It is very well done. As far as the comedy goes, and oh my goodness, the comedy here, not a lot of it worked, but some of it did. Some of the humor, far in between, did actually genuinely make me laugh. And to this film's credit, I will say the last five minutes of Pitch Perfect 3 was actually good. The final five minutes was the only time I actually felt like I was watching the final installment in this trilogy. Now with all that being said, wow, 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 what a disaster Pitch Perfect 3 is. Like I am speechless. There were honestly so many moments as I am suffering in the movie theater watching this film where I am just going. What in the hell was I watching? This is supposed to be a pitch perfect movie. And to some degree, it did have those pitch perfect moments that were rather enjoyable from the first and especially the second. But most of the movie did not feel like a pitch perfect movie. It is so out of place, especially when you look at the first two movies. Yes, you do get some of those moments, but a lot of it is just a lot of random nonsense. And yes, the first two had their moments, but not to the degree of Pitch Perfect 3. Pitch Perfect 3 just pushes ridiculousness to the next level, especially this stupid subplot dealing with Fat Amy and her father. Like they're actually making Fat Amy an action star. And it is complete nonsense. It's not even the funny kind of dumb. Cause I can laugh at dumb stuff. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I don't laugh at dumb stuff. I can laugh at dumb stuff. But how Pitch Perfect 3 executes the dumb stuff that happens, it's not funny, it's not entertaining, it's just aggravating, and it's just painful. Like, I hear originally there's supposed to be a Fat Amy spinoff movie, and who knows, maybe someday it could happen, but it just feels like because they turned what was supposed to be a Fat Amy movie into a third Pitch Perfect film, they're like, you know what, this whole spy subplot is such a good idea, we should just shove it into the story, even though it feels incredibly out of place. Like this movie really wants me to believe that Fat Amy is this action star and it's not working. Seriously, am I supposed to be watching a pitch perfect movie or a Mission Impossible movie starring Fat Amy? What am I supposed to be watching? This movie has no clue what to do. And since I'm talking about Fat Amy, now look, I said it, Rebel Wilson is good. She is no doubt giving it her all in her performance. Her performance is not the problem. The, the character Fat Amy is where I got really, really irritated. I could not stand Fat Amy. And I actually did not hate her in the first two movies. Um, but in this movie, she just got so annoying. The gags with her at this point we have been done to death. Only one scene with Fat Amy in this film made me laugh only one scene and not to spoil anything but it just deals with the scene with her on the phone with her father played by John Lithgow that's the only time a gag regarding Fat Amy worked for me besides that 
Every other gag dealing with Fat Amy and Pitch Perfect 3 was just horrible. Also, John Michael Higgins and Elizabeth Banks, granted, they're not bad in this film, but what was the point of shoehorning them into this film? It's like, we had to shoehorn them into this film because, oh, they were so enjoyable in the first two movies, and granted, they were, but... It's like, they just had to throw them in here. All they do in this film is document the Bellas, and that's about it. They did not need to be in this film at all. I mean, Adam Devine isn't back in this film. Yes, they reference him, but he's not back in this film. And that other actor, the one that Becca really likes in the first two movies, he's not back here. So if they can do that with this film, why couldn't that be the same for John Michael Higgins and Elizabeth Banks? Also, Ruby Rose is in this film, and she's not good in this film. She's actually really bad. And the others that are in her group were really bad, too. And these characters really serve nothing to the story at all. Rather than be, like, your generic rivals. Like, that's all they're there for, to be these rivals to the Bellas. They're just there to be there, and that's really it. And I really couldn't stand the moments when the movie does actually cut to them. You could tell Ed Editing and directing wise, it is a completely different movie from the first two movies, and I mean this in not a good way. Like, let's look at Thor Ragnarok. That was definitely a very different third installment when you compare it to the first two films, right? But it was a good kind of change. It was a good kind of change for that uh, trilogy. While with Pitch Perfect 3, the change really just feels out of place. Everything these characters were going through in the second Pitch Perfect, they're just thrown out the window. Like, remember in the second Pitch Perfect film when Becca was working with Keegan-Michael Key, who was the producer? Yeah, what happened to that? What happened to where she was gonna go with that one? Or Emily. They were building her up to be, like, possibly the main star of this series, but Emily is really more of a background character. And granted, it's not like she's not in the film a lot. She's in the film definitely enough, I'll say that, but they just push her to the side. And as far as the other performances go when it comes to the Bellas, they're just whatever, they're there. But John Lithgow, however, is horrible. I love John Lithgow. He is a great actor. He is so talented but he was horrible in Pitch Perfect 3. And I think what makes it even worse is that he uses an Australian accent. Please, for the love of God, do not let John Lithgow do an Australian accent ever, ever again, because that was piss poor. That is some of the worst attempts for an actor to do an Australian accent I've seen a long time, to be honest. Like, it was seriously that painful. God bless your soul, John Lithgow. You look like you were having fun, but please never do an Australian accent again. And then you have DJ Khaled here, who was just really thrown into the film. First of all, let me just say, I have nothing against DJ Khaled. I think he's actually one of the most, um, let's just say, interesting human beings on this planet. I will definitely say that. Um, definitely don't have anything against him, but yeah, he was just thrown in here, and I could say the same for any other character that you might see in this film. And since I'm talking about just throwing in characters for the sake of it, the film also feels the need to throw in a couple of forced romantic subplots that did not need to be in the film. So much of the stuff is unnecessary as it is, and the fact that we have to deal with a couple of romantic subplots just makes me go, why? Just why? I just don't believe in the chemistry when it comes to those romantic subplots. And since I'm talking about how different Pitch Perfect 3 was, the editing in this film is so unbelievably choppy. Like, first, it'll just cut, cut, cut to, like, different random locations, like, say, for example, of the beach or the buildings, and then it has these zoom-ins, and then the Bellas, and then it cuts to the other thing. Like, I don't know who edited this film. I don't know if they got one editor to edit this film. I don't know if they got six editors. 
to edit this film, but whoever edited this film did honestly a very poor job. The editing was so distracting. It honestly has some of the worst editing I've seen from 2017. I couldn't believe how bad the editing is. The direction itself too was really bad. I can't comment on Trish C's other work, um, but as far as how she directed this film, it really was not good. I feel like if Elizabeth Banks directed this film, like with Pitch Perfect 2, it could have been a better directed film. Regardless of the script, I feel like direction-wise, the movie could have at least looked better, but Trish C just delivers very, very flat direction here, and I really was not impressed impressed with it. And cinematography, while I will say it didn't look as bad as it did in the trailers, it is still not that impressive. The first two Pitch Perfect movies had really great cinematography and this one just really pales in comparison. And last but not least, the humor in Pitch Perfect 3 is unforgivable. I gotta be honest, I know comedy is subjective and if you really enjoyed the humor in Pitch Perfect 3, that is perfectly okay. I am very glad you found enjoyment in something that I obviously couldn't and while it did have its moments far in between that did actually genuinely make me laugh. So much of it was really cringeworthy. I cringe so hard in the theater watching this film because the comedy was bad. Just the writing was very bad in general and I couldn't believe this was actually a Pitch Perfect movie. Overall, Pitch Perfect 3 is a horrible way to say bye to the Bellas. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I was actually very speechless by the time this movie ended. Even with that good ending, I was reflecting to just the rest of the movie before that very redeemable ending, and I'm just processing, what did I watch? It was just so stupid, and it's not the good kind of stupid. It's just really, really frustratingly stupid. Stupid. Pitch Perfect 2 definitely should have been the ending to this thing. In my opinion, th there shouldn't have been a Pitch Perfect 3. And if there was going to be a third Pitch Perfect, at least come up with a better idea that could keep the storylines from the first two movies really going. And it just felt like they had no clue what to do. So the storyline that they com came up with, they just stuck to it without thinking of a better idea for it. It just feels so incredibly lazy. It's so cliched. It's so predictable predictable and there is just not much to this film it's really bad definitely one of the worst movies of 2017 pitch perfect 3 is going to get one and a half out of four stars from me so everybody in the comments down below let me know what did you think about pitch perfect 3 and i know film is subjective so if any of you enjoyed pitch perfect 3 i really am happy for you um that's the great thing about film so let me know if you did actually enjoy this film or not and if you actually enjoyed the pitch perfect trilogy as a whole this is 22 tiger dude here and don't forget that i will always have tiger power See you later, pitches.